my amazing uh, powers, I am summoned from 106 years in the future, from the year 2011. There once was a governor who decided to use all the mechanisms of state for his own personal benefit. No, it's true. Even once, <laughs> as, as a senator from Illinois would become president one day, and he would attempt to sell the Senate seat. This oh. is the cost of all this little corruption and fun. I know, I know, I know. It's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. It's terrible. But I, I present to you all I, a, a, a terrible a, a man who's already in my possession. May I present to you your once future and, and a future former governor, Governor Rock Blagojevich! <laughs> Everybody. Oh, wow. Fuck. Sorry, sorry, I was trying to stop that. Um, I apologize first and foremost for the hair. There is no moose in prison. Um, but there is a guy named Moose, and I don't want to talk about that at all. See that black guy? Nothing compared to the brown one. My goodness. Um, anyways, I am here as part of a community service project in which I am here to tell all you whores, charlatans, gamblers, all you corrupt city officials, the errors of your ways. Because it is a beautiful city that we live in, it is a beautiful pearl inside of an oyster, and it is wrong to defile that pearl. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. this. This is a lie, this is a lie. They, they've got me, you know? They pin me up against the wall, and you know, maybe one day, I will never be president, but that doesn't mean that I can't be El Presidente. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I've had a lot of time to read, read about great patriots, and this is, this is something that inspired me from a great patriot from Cuba. I want you all to, to know a few things, okay? Dear Chicagoans, never has a governor had to practice his profession under such difficult conditions. Never has such a number of overwhelming irregularities been committed against an accused man. I, who speak to you, hate vanity. And with all my being, nor is my temperament or frame of mind inclined toward courtroom poses or sensationalism of any kind. To you, on honorable people, my sincere gratitude for having allowed me to express myself free from contemptible restrictions. I pity, this is who I pity, the prosecutors of Chicago, who should resign, resign in shame and cowardice, because that is what they are, cowards. Fundamental matters of principle are being debated here. The right of men to be free is on trial. The very foundation of our existence as a civilized and democratic nation are in the balance. Yes, now that my trial is over, I do not want to have to reproach myself for any principle left undefended, for any truth left unsaid, for any crime not denounced. I warn you, I'm just beginning. I'm just beginning. If there, if there is in your hearts a vestige of love for your country, for humanity, the love of justice, listen carefully. I know that I will be silenced for many years. I know that the regime of Patrick Fitzgerald will try to suppress the truth by all possible means. But my advice will not be, my voice will not be stifled. Neither will my vice. It will rise from my breast, even when I feel most alone and my heart will give it all the fire that callous cowards deny it. The fact is, when men carry the same ideals in their hearts, nothing can isolate them. Neither prison, wall, nor sod of cemetery. For a single memory, a single spirit, a single idea, a single conscience, a single dignity will just sustain them all. I know that imprisonment will be harder for me than most. I'm filled with cowardly threats and hideous cruelties, but I do not fear prison. Condemn me, 
It does not matter. It is history. It is history which shall absolve me. And now I'm going to blow some bubbles for you. Hold this, Beth. 